What's up guys and welcome back to another video. Today's video we're talking Springbok director of rugby Rossi Rasmus as he returns this weekend as water boy for the Springboks which as we know a few weeks ago or month, about a month ago now caused a lot of controversy amongst Warren Gatlin and the Lions team as to how can this bloke be a water boy as well as one of your coaching assistants but in the world rugby rules he's allowed to do it because you're only allowed you're allowed three water boys and one as long as one's not your coach so Rusty did what he does best he caused a stir using his genius of the game to stir people to alert people to get people under pressure and he definitely got his numbers heard but just not that weeks weeks later he created a youtube video or social media video that wasn't supposed to be leaked but got leaked and it took the world by storm where he had covered quite a number of elements with regards to the previous game uh, the refereeing uh, tackles that were not seen uh, decisions that were not made poor uh, performances from uh, the British and Irish Lions players, etc, etc. But at the end of the day, Warren Gatlin could have, done, could have done the same, but he decided not to. But it's against World Rugby's rules and regulation, and we are still, to this day, after a good number of weeks, waiting to hear the fate of Rassi Erasmus, of what they're going to do to the Springbok director. Now, a lot of people are saying World Rugby's been pressurised to make an example of the Springboks, um, uh, director of rugby and I want to, to hand him a lengthy band. Australia have joined England, Ireland, Scotland and Wales in lobbying the sports governing bodies ahead of Erasmus upcoming misconduct hearing. It's a rugby and Erasmus has received apparently a list of charges related to 60 minute video critique um, of Australian rugby referee Nick Berry's display uh, in the opening test of the recent Irish Lions um, uh, this match, let's not forgetting that Warren Gatlin did something similar but more old school in the media when we obviously heard him talk about Fafta Clark's red card that wasn't given. He complained about Marius Juncker, attempted that kind of decision into fight, which caused Marius Juncker to do shocking referee decisions uh, and hesitating on certain things. So, But no, we don't talk about that one. We'd rather talk about Rassi and his video. I mean, there's there is obviously a massive difference between old school media and then social media. It's the new formation of what we as content creators and media outlets do. I mean, it's still media at the end of the day. That's what I studied. But obviously also that wasn't just about that. It was the disrespect shown or the favoritism shown between uh, Nick Berry and um, Anna Wood Jones and rather Sia Khaleesi being shoved away. Um, obviously that wasn't the case in the upcoming tests. We saw respect given to Sia as it should have been in the first place. But it takes a coach to outspeak and to talk in order for this to get alert. Now, I know we're not going to all agree with this. And we're all going to go at me probably and some won't, some will agree with me. But at the end of the day, something like this kind of needed to happen. And right now we don't want it, to, we didn't want it to happen and to affect one of the greatest British and Irish Lions tours in the history of the sport because um, it, it's a historic event which is always going to be scarred now by this day. But we've seen constant decisions of refereeing that have been either missed or ignored and it's, it's gotten to a crowd to boo or to alert the ref in order to make decisions. We're not seeing more authority from the TMOs in order if they see something. Why aren't they calling on the referees to say, Oi, sorry mate, I, I saw that, that's illegal. The guy does his card or he doesn't, or you are wrong. Let's look back at what you you thought and then we'd give the card from there. None of that's been happening in the sport that we know and call rugby. There's not many captain's referrals. I think there should be more. A captain should be given the right to maybe say, listen, Mr. F, sorry, I respect you, but, but let's just look back at that one because you clearly missed a performance dunk tackle or a, a misconduct, whereas a guy last week would have gotten a red card. This week, you're not even looking at it. Those types of things need to be brought in. But when you've got a board of blokes who are in charge of world rugby who are unfortunately older than usual, things tend to obviously get slower. We need to update world rugby and get things going right. The fact of the matter is that they've taken over a, almost a month to decide the fate of Rusty Rasmus, to decide the fate of Warren Gatlin, because he's obviously included in this, by the way. It wasn't just Rusty that they went for, it's Gatlin as well. To, to decide the fate of how this game should be played and how we should approach it and how we should get our, our messages be heard. 
if a referee and don't get me wrong i respect refs uh, but with decisions are made that affects a game or a tournament like this things need to happen people need to be given the right to say something in order to get results or answers if you wanted to get results by Monday, or if you're needing results by Monday, but World Rugby only decide things on Tuesday because of Six Nations rules, but that rule doesn't follow into the Southern Hemisphere as well, or we weren't alert of it. I mean, where's the communication? First of all, where's the communication amongst the RB World Rugby Board or World Rugby Board? Bill Beaumont and his team should have a set example of if you want to contact us here, you contact us there. If you want to contact your CEO, for example, you have to look at his diary, he or she's diary, and say, okay, he's available there, or you talk to his assistant. I mean, the, the fact that Nick Barry said, oh, no, we can't do this now, we have to do it on Tuesday, <sighs> whatever. And I know a lot will throw back, oh, why does Rassi have to name his squad at that time? It's the way Rassi was doing it. Um, again, it's 50-50. There are things that Rassi said that I agree with, there are things that I don't agree with, um, and, and, and didn't deserve to be put in the media. But he's now done something that I think in four years' time, we are going to walk, look back and go, the genius that is Rusty Rasmus. The genius behind the creator of causing a stir, and creating a vibe where sometimes it's needed. Sometimes it's needed to wake up the sport, to get things going, to get things moving. But anyway, that's been said. We, we're still waiting to hear what World Rugby are going to do. I think they're going to pretty much nail him. I, if I were to really clap us, I would have put Rusty already um, on the play back home, or weren't allowed on a plane to New Zealand or Australia, not allowed anywhere near the New Zealand test or the Australia test, which will hurt, obviously, because it's a big influence to our team. But not only that, I see a positive in it as well, because I see an opportunity for Car Shark to take the limelight. Last weekend, it wasn't really about Rusty. It was about the Springboks playing a good game of rugby, making mistakes, yes, but playing a good game of rugby, winning deservedly, and obviously producing the goods for the coach and for the players on that field. So I was impressed. So now I'm just curious to see how we're going to go about it in the uh, coming weeks. So I think that's going to be one punishment. Rice is going to be fine, obviously money. Um, it's not like World Rugby have enough, but um, they're going to be fine that. They're going to be, he's going to get um, suspended for a good few months. Probably not going to be allowed on the field again. Waterboy Joe is going to be fired. Um, and he's not going to be allowed to go overseas. I think those are going to be some big ones and obviously other things with regards to um, other financial implications, maybe Sia, because he got disrespected or get fined for that as well. You never know, it is World Rugby after all. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens. But again, it's going to be an interesting week or two weeks or three weeks, maybe a month, maybe a year. It's a bit like South African government, not quite sure what they want to do, but yet they think they have the answer already. Yeah, so we'll see. I hope somewhere we can laugh about it in a few years' time. Right now, it's just getting frustrating and it's prolonging. Make your damn decision so we can move on and get back to the sport we came, came of. In a few weeks' time, we're going to be playing the greatest tests of our lives against our good friends in Australia and New Zealand. We're playing a phenomenal test series this weekend in Pretoria, uh, Port Elizabeth, Abeja, um, which I think is going to be outstanding. And I want this drama surrounding this tournament like we saw the Lions get affected because it's going to be drama and it's going to cause a stir. Whether we like it or not, we're going to disagree and agree on the, the, the outcomes of what World Rugby decide, but they need to decide it now because it's getting a bit out of hand. But anyway, that's going to do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm sure there's a few who wouldn't, but anyway, all to our own opinions. So please be sure to let me know yours in the comment section down below. That's going to do it for today's video. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys real soon for another one. Stay safe and never give up. Cheers.